he has <clears throat> he has maintained his own practice as a graphic uh, designer. He has uh, had a poster chosen as the poster of the year and published worldwide by the National Council of Churches, and he's won many other reward awards for his. Uh, for the design of uh, posters and graphics and reports. Uh, as uh, in his position with the uh, Society of Danish Architects, he has uh, been in charge of all of the competitions that the Society does, and I think he'll be telling us about those tonight. He, was, he first spoke in this school two years ago when he brought the tour of 44 Danish architects over here to spend 10 days in Chicago, Indiana, and uh, northern Kentucky. Uh, that group spent a day in the school here and had a very exciting uh, uh, time of it. Uh, we had a really fine trip, I can guarantee you, and there will be another one uh, coming, we hope, next fall. Uh, so it'll be nice to, to have uh, Niels Von Baer here for these six weeks he's with us, but to welcome him back again uh, next fall. Uh, so tonight, uh, I think we should get on with the program, and I would introduce to you uh, Niels Von Baer, architect from Copenhagen, Denmark. Niels? Thank you very much. On the license plate on your car here in Mansi, it is written, back home again. Even without a car, I really feel that I'm back home again. I visit, as you heard before, Ball State University for the first time two years ago with a group of 44 architects. We had some very nice hours here. I did a short lecture right here in this auditorium. After the lecture, the Dean Robert Fisher came to me and said, would you like a job here at the college? Well, two years later, I received a letter from Marvin Rosenman telling that if I wanted the job, it was right now. I would like to thank Robert Fisher and Marvin Rosenman. They have both been so kind to me. Especially, I would like to thank Mary Friend and Charles Sappenfield. Without this couple, my state had not been possible. They have not only been kind to me, but like a mother and father. Before I arrived and during my stay. Well, to choose the right architect is something rather important. The building he is going to design for you will stay there for the next hundred years or more. And has to be seen and used not only by you, but by thousands of other people. There are, I believe, four ways to choose an architect. The two first are probably the most common. You can, and that's the first one, you can looking up in the yellow pages. <laughs> Uh, and there are lots of them. 
Number two, you can choose one because he will invite you for a nice dinner. <laughs> and there are lots of nice dinners to find in every kind a booklet concerning this area. Well, we don't not like these two ways, so um, I will continue with the next two. So number three, you choose an architect with care. That means you look what he had done a project before, you read about him, you talk with his former clients, and you make clear that you do like his style and former projects. That means you choose him with the same care as you would choose your partner or a painter if you're going to be portrayed. And then the final way, number four, you can choose the architect through an architectural competition. And it is the fourth way to choose an architect I'm going to tell you a little about. Well, we start in Denmark, which is part of the Scandinavian countries. Denmark is here in the south. We have Sweden up there, Norway up there, and Finland in the very north. Western Germany here, Eastern Germany, Poland, and part of uh, the Soviet Union. Here's Denmark, making Germany to the south, and uh, it's in the peninsula, and something like uh, two or three thousand islands. In the far east, we have the main capital, the main town in Denmark, the capital, Copenhagen. And uh, that's the place where I'm working, and that's the place where you find the Federation of Danish Architects. But let's have a short look what Denmark is all about. It looks like Indiana. But it is Denmark, except maybe the cows. We call them red cows. They aren't that brown, but uh, that's the name. <coughs> the Danes, that's a typical Danish uh, church in the countryside. It's probably built in uh, 12 or 1300. The forest. from inside and with snow. And then uh, we have a beautiful sky and a sea coast, which is as long as the Mississippi River. That's the sea coast in the evening. And then we have a flag red and white. And a queen, her husband and their two sons. Well, in the Federation, which does the administration about competition, I'm working. But uh, what is an architectural competition. To do a competition, there should be a catalog written and published by the client and the Federation of Danish Architects. There should be a jury of at least seven people 
And of these seven, three of them should be architects. There should be a price of money. There should be a fair time to design proposals. There should be full anonymity. And, of course, you never pay any kind of fee to join a Danish competition. In Denmark, we have had for the last 90 years more than 700 competitions. Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot the little mermaid, and which is placed in just uh, near the harbor in Copenhagen. In Denmark, we have had uh, this competition. The town hall of Copenhagen from 1910 is the result of a public competition. The architect had a trip for Italy short before he delivered his uh, proposal. And uh, who of you who are familiar with uh, the old Italian architecture can find lots of detail in this building coming from Italy. The town hall in Aarhus, another main town in Denmark, is the result of a public competition 50 years ago in 1938. The architect was Arne Jacobsen, together with his partner Erik Müller. You can make competitions about almost everything in the architectural world. Since 1900, in Denmark, we have had competitions about, for instance, town planning, parks and playgrounds, living houses, one-family houses, farms, hospitals, nurseries, churches, monuments, theaters, and concert halls. Here is one in Aarhus designed by the architects Kerr and Richter. We have had competition about museums. Here is one I did uh, that was the Fishery Museum in Asia. Where people can sit there looking over the North Sea. And uh, if you are close to the sea, that is what you see at the museum. Uh, the windows um, are the windows for the restaurant. This is the Museum of Art placed in Aalborg in the north part of uh, Denmark. And uh, it is designed by Alvar Alto from Finland, together with a Danish architect called Jean-Jacques Baruel. Very close to Aalborg, we have Holsterbro, where a Danish female architect uh, did this museum of art. And uh, now you can see the influence from United States, it's not Richard Meyer, but uh, an architect from Denmark uh, who designed uh, this, I think, very beautiful museum of art. Well, that was museums. We have restaurants in competition, sport halls, and then, of course, universities. 
And uh, one of the famous is uh, the university in Aarhus, which um, they started um, the, the project in 1938, and they are still building on this enormous university designed by C.F. Müller. And we're going a little up to the north again and meet the university in Aalborg, uh, which is a complex like that, um, with lakes and um, small streams. Uh, it's like a campus, as here in Ball State University, and uh, just built in rake, bricks and concrete. That's the two main materials used in, uh, in this building's complex. It's very rough uh, made in materials. Well, uh, then of course schools. And uh, here's a school which is made just in rough timber. It's uh, a school I designed uh, together with uh, some other architects. And uh, it's, the material is there just rough wood. The main construction uh, is in dark red, the color you have here from the farm. And the rest is as timber. It's very simple done, and uh, I must say that uh, it is also very cheap. Um, there you have the construction, and I think I have another one. Yeah, there's two of my partners on this school. And then libraries, and uh, sorry, and uh, I'm sorry about that. It's there we are. <clears throat> the library in Gentafte, designed by one of the famous architects in Denmark, Henning Larsen, in the winter time here, and inside. And uh, you see uh, the impression from uh, architecture in the United States, translated to Danish. And uh, another library. Um, from Jutland, designed by the same architect who did the Ruff University in Aalborg. It's two architects called Dahl and Linhardsen. It's still that's very brutal um, and um, rough kind of architecture. And then uh, town halls. In the very north, we have the town hall in Skein. And uh, it was designed by an architect before the World War Number Two, but because of the war, the war, uh, they were not able to build it because they haven't the money and the materials, so they had to wait to after the World War. And this is architect, he uh, visited for a few months the architectural office of Le Corbusier in Paris, and he was so fond of Corbusier that uh, he placed many of the details he had learned in this office to this town hall. He was so fond of Corbusier that he even bought a pair of glasses exactly as Corbusier uh, has and a bow tower which um, Corbusier used too. And the town hall in Ola, designed by the architect Fritz and Malke, another couple uh, which are famous in Denmark. And then 
centers for administration, banks, shops, office buildings, buildings for materials, kitchen, light fittings, graphic design, furniture, exhibition and exhibition halls, and I could go on. Well, one of the first things the Federation of Danish Architects did 90 years ago was to arrange rules for architectural competitions. It was, at that time, very required. It was unusual that the catalog for a competition was written. The architect had to ask the client what the competition was all about. At that time, there was running a competition about a drugstore. As usual, the architect who wanted to join the competition had to ask the chemist himself about what should be in the building. In a Danish architectural magazine, an architect wrote, because the chemist has more to do and think about than to give information about buildings, it happens easily when he is busy in his shop that he gives one information to the right and another information to the left. These words led to creating a committee of 10 architects elected by the members of the Federation of Danish Architects. The job for the committee was to create rules for participation in competitions. That was in 1907. The rules they did still exist. The committee still exists. Well, not with the first 10 architects, but some others. There have since 1907 been, as you heard before, competition about the biggest to the smallest, from university buildings to advertisement pillars, from hospitals to trademarks. It is a common theory that most of the competition are born and die on the drawing board. But it is not true. More than 80% of all projects of competition since year 1900 have been realized. Let us have a look on an example. In the summer 1984, the Scandinavian airline system, in cooperation with the Federation of Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish architects, contacted 131 different architect offices, asking them if they were interested to join a competition about a new office building for the Scandinavian Airlines system placed just outside Stockholm, the capital in Sweden. Out of the 131 offices were 11 chosen by the Scandinavian Airlines system to join the competition. The purpose for the competition was one, the site should be deposed in such a way that the buildings proposed will give the Scandinavian airline system freedom for activities in the future. Two, the disposition and the design of the buildings should give the best condition for a rational business. Of course. Three, 
all areas for rooms written in the catalog are metal areas. That means that no communication areas are pointed out. It is important to put the different rooms together in such a way that the brutal area will be a minimum. The capital and the management expenses are a great exponents. The economy plays a big role by judging the proposals. And finally, number four, the site has an unique situation, a real wonderful place. This should be turned to account by designing the buildings inside as well as outside and the design of the landscape. The jury, which includes the director, Jan Carlson, decided to give the first prize to an architect from Norway, but they didn't know that who the architect was before they opened the envelopes. This architect is named Nils Torp. The first prize was in US dollars, 86,000. The other invited people, the other invited architect, received 43,000 each. The jury says in its report that Mr. Nils Torp does a lot of designing the landscape, including the main way to the office building, the circular parking place created as a park and with full respect for the existing surroundings. The main building has various size in height and form and has a glass covered street. The street is open in both ends, in one end to the mountain, of course named the Scandinavian Airline System Mountain, and in the other end to a lake. The proposal put the question, how, can, how big can a building be without losing its identity and its individuality. As a consequence of that, the main building is divided in small units of various sizes and forms. The jury says that the proposal is excellent done, both concerning the design of the landscape and the building. The economy, the organization, the working environment, and the flexibility are solved satisfied. And they have started to build the building today. But uh, let's, let's have a look at some of the other projects. The Danish architectural office Dissing and Weitling did low and spread buildings and therefore very requiring square meters. The jury says that the landscape is formed simple and almost schematic. The main entrance is placed in an unpractical and confused way. The main design has great dramatic effect. The communi uh, commun communication system is well done and the street 
and the foyer gives both an easy orientation. The main weakness is the long distance between the different parts in the building complex. Dell and Linhardsen, that was the architect with the brutal and rough architecture, did a project where the main design is the structure of a town more than a building. Several thousand people are going to work here. So it's a kind of a new town. On both sides of the main building turned a little according to the sea coast. It's right in the middle of the picture. They are placed two small towns close to the beach, holding together with a running glass covered net of streets. The main building is covered with a glass dome, which should be the landmark for the Scandinavian airline system building and towns. The jury says that the idea in the proposal is very interesting and well done. I find this project uh, excellent. Henning Larsen was the third Danish architect who joined the competition. His project is formed with office buildings in three to four floors, which are the basic for the nine, uh, 18 floors high twin towers. The towers should be the coming landmark for the Scandinavian airline system. The central building between these two towers is covered with glass. It gives the impression of an architectural abstraction for a Nordic nature, a frozen waterfall between two big mountains. Well, the jury means that the whole complex is a strange thing in a Swedish landscape. Here you are. Henning Larsen has indeed designed better buildings than this one we saw before. Just think about the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Saudi Arabia which was the first prize in an international competition. Well, this was to give you an impression of what can be delivered in a competition. But you can ask, how does the Scandinavian airline system know that the Nordic Federation of Architects are concerned with competition? In the Federation of Danish Architects, we have published which is a little leaflet, which I, I think it's covered. Well, uh, with a little leaflet. Well, um, and uh, it is called, Why Not Do a Competition? This leaflet has been sent to all municipalities, building constructors, and different offices, and the government. Every time we read in the newspaper about plans for new buildings, and before the client has chosen an architect. 
the Federation sends this leaflet and a letter asking for a short meeting free of charge. In the Federation, we are three architects concerning with administration of architectural competitions. That is, us three who read the papers, send the leaflets, write the letters, and go to the meetings. In many cases, the clients find the idea with a competition good because he thinks it is a good business to make a competition. And I will tell you why. In the first meeting, we try to create a plan for the coming work. According to this plan, we can tell the client exactly what his competition will cost in money. Before I explain about the cost of the competition. So uh, let's have a look at the catalog. The cover should be nice looking. It is a signal from the client and tells that it is important, an important document. The first page in such a catalog is the invitation to all citizens, not only architects, to join the competition. Then there is an information about the relevant town planning situation, how and where to enter the site, where to build and where you may not build, how high, how much, and so on. Then comes a description of the purpose. What kind of sorts and wishes does the client have to his new building and how much money may it cost. And finally, in the catalog, you will find the conditions. Who may join? There's a list of drawings, maps, and other papers you need to do the competition and where to get them. Another list tells you what you should deliver. There's mention a date when you have to deliver, the total price to win, and the jury. And that means the names and the position for the, for the whole jury. The jury exists a minimum seven people, several persons. Three of them are architects pointed out by the Federation of Danish Architects. The other four or more persons are pointed out by the client. You see, the representatives of the client are always in majority. The architects are advisors only. It is the client's project, and he's going to build it and pay for that. He has to be absolutely satisfied with adjustment. Almost always, the whole jury agree in the final decision. But we find it important that the client agrees with the professional jury architect and of course is happy for the winning project. It must not be so that he feels that the architect have made the decision for him, against him or 
without him. Let us assume that the client wants to choose an architect through a competition. He's going to build a bank office building. He knows what he needs are offices, lecture halls, shopping areas, and other rooms of a total of, let's say, 8,000 square meters, that is 88,000 square feet. If you add corridors for years, stairs, restrooms, and other rooms of this kind, you will have a total of 10,000 square meters or 110,000 square feet. And to build such a building of 10,000 square meters will approximately altogether cost you 100 million krona in Denmark, and that is 15 million dollars. The architect fee for a 15 million dollars building is approximately $600,000. 30% of this amount of money should be the total price in an open public competition. And 30% again will give you the first price and that means $54,000. The Federation will have a fee for doing the administration connected to the competition. And that is meeting with a client and other advisors, meeting and writing the catalog, choose illustration and photos for the catalog, choose and maybe draw information drawings, organize and do the layout for the catalog, choose and pay the three professional members of the jury, the architects, accept the final catalog, arrange the competition, do the registration of all participants, help the question to the competition and uh, to the catalog, arrange the judgment, arrange the exhibition, do the press work and many other things. And for that, the clients have to pay something like $30,000. This amount of money is uh, what we know of experience is necessary to do the job. Then the client, of course, have to pay to print the catalog, make uh, insurance for the proposal, put up screens for the judgment, pay the travel expenses for the jury, the exhibition, reception, and so on, and that will cost him around $20,000. The numbers I have mentioned here are all round figures and including tax. But altogether, a public competition for a bank office building of 110,000 square feet costs around $200,000 or something like 1.3% of what the whole building will cost. Is that expensive or is it cheap? There are, of course, different kinds of competitions. The most common is, as I mentioned before, the open public competition. That means that all citizens in the country may participate. It's not only architects. Another one, which is rather common, is the invited competition. That is a competition where the client invites three, four, six different architects, architect firms to participate and pay them all for their proposals. Then there's a type where competition is only open for architects living in a certain region. 
The competition itself can be a project competition, which means that the final proposal is going to be built. Or an idea competition, where the final proposal is part of a discussion about a certain problem in, for instance, a town plan. Finally, but uh, there are more different competition types as well. I'll just mention the competition in stages. That is, that after first stage, a certain numbers of participators go for the second stage where the client wants more detailed drawings. And after this stage, or perhaps after a third stage, you find the winner of the project. And then, of course, we had the international competition here, a project done by the Danish architect Jan Utsan, a result um, from an international competition, the parliament in Kuwait. But coming to all kind of competition is our rules which I mentioned before. If a client wants to make a competition himself without help from the official Federation of Danish Architects, and that's possible, of course. And let's say that the competition is at variance with the rules. The Federation of Danish Architects blocks the competition, so no members may participate. It happens once or twice every year. Many of the most important buildings in different cities in Denmark are a result of competitions. But it's not only through these results that competitions have existed influence of the development. Often the client had asked for new ideas only without thinking that it should end up with a real building. The architectural object, the town planning object, and often the building technical object of ideas have been very close involved in architectural competitions. It has given the opportunity to test different theories and ideas in a competition where the motive power often has been the professional ambition more than the chance to win a prize of money. The development of the architectural object depends on satisfied architectural education. At the architectural schools, the attitudes and many of the standards for the exercise of the objects are created. These are objects which the architects have in common. The individual development depends more on the condition outside the architectural schools and on the possibility in developments in the job you have got after your education. Joining an architectural competition can be compared with joining a research project by a man of science. I know from friends in different architects' offices that it will cost from $14,000 and up to join such a competition I described before. But they also tell that it is a good investment. You can call it a further education for the staff in the office, which is rather important. You can add that it is a kind of advertisement and that may be the way and the chance 
for young talents. In a bank office building competition, we calculate that there will be delivered around 50 proposal or projects. The total value of this project is something like 500,000 to 1 million dollars or between three to five times what it cost the client to arrange the competition. Add to that that the client will have three very good architects as advisors in the jury helping him to find out what project out of 50 is the best one according to the demands written in the catalog. Therefore, it is not a surprise to hear clients tell it is a good business to make an architectural competition. And the architect answer, yes, it is nice to take part in a competition. Always exciting and instructive. So, there are four ways to choose an architect. But there are just two ways to choose the right one either by care or by an architectural competition. I mentioned in the beginning, I'm very happy to be back home again in Indiana. I have enjoyed my time at Ball State University and I still enjoy my time. I have some very nice students, both in the studio class and in the evening class. I have met many of my old friends and I have got at least 200 new friends. Thank you very much. I'm sure that uh, Mr. Vombear will answer any questions you might direct to him at this time. Any questions? If not, he will be here and in the exhibition area and you can direct your questions to him personally. Thank you very much. Yeah.